Hello. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the difference between posts and pages, kind of an overview of the concepts of posts and pages. Each of these things that I'll be talking to will have further detailed videos on how to create and edit posts, also how to create and edit pages, and a few other things that I'm going to mention in this video. So if I mention a term uh, or uh, lack some detail that you're looking for, check the later videos. There is probably one that covers it. Now I'm starting here in our dashboard, but the core of this video is actually going to take place on the website itself to introduce you to these concepts. So right off the top, I'm going to go ahead and here and switch over to our sample website. Now keep in mind this is not themed. Uh, the text is in like here you can see is, is random Latin. Text is not important. The theme is not important. Just want to kind of show you these concepts in our sample site here. Okay, let's start with posts. Your home page, the way we've got it set up, is a blog, and blogs are made up of posts. Posts are considered kind of timely new information. You can think of them as news. What is happening in the library? What's going to happen? What's going to happen in the library? What happened in the library recently? Uh, what new books are, are coming into the library this week, that sort of thing. Um, posts are going to show up on your home page in a reverse chronological order. They're going to look like this. There's going to be the title of the post. There's going to be um, some sort of opportunity for your patrons to leave a comment or a reply, and uh, the exact positioning of that will vary based upon uh, your theme. You have the text of your post and any images you may have included in it. And then scrolling down a little further, we'll see that this entry was posted in uncategorized. Now, that's known as the category, and we do have a separate category video on that. And at this point, mine's labeled as uncategorized because I haven't created that video yet. Um, uh, on November 4th, 2014, so this was when I wrote this post. And then by and my name, so it's who wrote uh, the post, in this case, me. And um, this is actually controlled in the uh, user settings screen. Uh, and then in this case, you're seeing an edit. Now, your patrons will never see that edit. In this case, we're only seeing the edit because I'm currently logged into my website. I have the dashboard running on uh, that other tab. So that's the reason why I see edit. So that's my newest post. It's at the top of the page. As I scroll down here, uh, we have a do you know post, uh, also in the same format. That was written on September 19th. That's the next oldest post. Then we have digitized art history materials. That's the next oldest post. So this reverse chronological order, the idea is that the newest stuff is on the top. Now uh, we uh, have in the video on uh, general settings for your website, there is control of how many of these posts show up on your homepage or how long they stay on your webpage. So I'll refer you back to that. Uh, as posts generally fall off, they will be archived. And we've talked about that in one of the settings videos also. Pages, on the other hand, are generally going to be shown in a menu across the top of your, your, your website. And these are generally going to stay on every single page. Now, the actual look and feel of this menu might uh, vary from uh, based on your theme. But uh, again, you'll get the general point here. Home is generally always going to be first, and that will always take you back to your library's homepage. And then by default, any pages you have listed will then be listed in this menu in alphabetical order. In the pages video, I'll show you how you can change that if you want them in a different order. Um, there is a video specifically on the calendar page that I've created for you, and there's a, a video specifically on the contact page that I've created for you. So if you'd like to see how those are specifically set up, you're welcome to watch those videos. You'll also, by default, receive a For Kids and Teens page and a Nebraska Resources page. Pages are designed to be kind of static content that doesn't change all that often. Um, so our, for example, list of Nebraska resources. If I pull that up, this is just a simple bulleted list. You could add a graphic to this. You can add additional content to this if you want to. But our list of Nebraska resources is really not going to change. It doesn't require a post that says, hey, on Tuesday, the Nebraska resources on this, whereas next Thursday, the Nebraska resources are going to be this. The list of resources pretty much is going to stay static. Now, you might want to write a blog post that says we've added new resources to the Nebraska resources page, but that's news. The page itself is not news, so you're going to leave it as a static page. Okay. Um, so you, uh, we have the video uh, for uh, how to create pages, and we will do that. So real quick as a review. Posts are designed to be kind of newsworthy, new content, kind of dated content, whereas pages are designed to be more of kind of a static long-term content. 
Now, one other thing on pages I want to talk about in this video is what other pages might you want to create. Some libraries have created a page uh, listing or giving a history of the library. That would be a great example. Uh, we've had other libraries create a list about special collections that they have in their library. So if you've got that cake pan collection or that tool collection, you can create a page dedicated to that just to tell your patrons about that particular collection. One of the things I really want to stress is you are going to want to create a policies page. Now if you have lots of policies or your policies are long, you may want to split those policies up into multiple pages. But um, the policies is something we've left for you to do because each policy is going to be different from library to library. So what I'll suggest you do, and we'll create as a, as a sample in the policies video, is a page so that you have a menu item up here for policies and then your patrons can see what your library's policies are. I'll also show you in that video how you can create kind of a drop down menu using pages so you could have say a menu label of uh, policies up here and then as they hover over that they'll get sub choices for like computer policies, Wi-Fi policies, circulation policies, that sort of thing. Okay. So the last thing I'd like to show you in this uh, video here is I'm going to go back to my dashboard and just point out that we have a posts menu here and a pages menu here. Now as you'll see in this case under pages we have all pages and add new. Under posts we have all posts and add new but then we also have categories and tags which I'll talk about in, in their own separate videos. Posts and pages from the back end are going to work very similarly but do have some significant differences hence their own individual videos. And so I just want to point out that if you want to create a new post under the post menu here you have add new. If you want to create a new page under the pages menu you have add new. So one last review. Pages are for static content that's not going to change a lot over time uh, that you want people to be able to get to. Posts are for newsworthy, up-to-date content where you want the new information displayed to your patrons at the top of the page, at the top of your blog on your home page, and then as new information comes in, the older inf information moves down and eventually into the archives. As always, thanks for watching this video, and if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them in the comments area below on this blog post, or go ahead and drop me an email. Thanks for watching.